this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about how to upgrade your CPU and show you the various steps that are necessary in order to swap out your CPU to improve performance and upgrade. Now in theory it's relatively easy in that the end result should be you just basically swapping out your CPU for a new one and then replacing your cooler and going on with your life. However, there are some really important things to bear in mind before you even start thinking about this process and essential things to know. So stick with me now as I talk through all the different things that's important to bear in mind before you start. The first one is socket type. So it's important to know the socket type of your motherboard because we're thinking here that essentially what you're trying to do is upgrade your CPU without swapping out your entire system and building a new PC. So you need to keep in mind your motherboard because that is the foundation of your PC and the essential part that's going to stay in there that you're not going to swap out your motherboard. You're just looking to upgrade your CPU. So socket type is essentially where the CPUs fits in. That is the size and shape of the thing, but also the technology behind it. Now this changes every few years and if you've had a motherboard for a few years you might not be able to buy the latest CPU and just put it in your motherboard because it'll have a different socket type. So for example at the time I'm making this video the current socket type is called LGA 1700 on Intel's setup and that allows access to Intel's older lake processors which are Intel's 12th gen and Intel Raptor Lake which is Intel's 13th generation of CPUs. So if you had an LGA 1700 motherboard already and you'd purchased an Intel 12th gen processor, you could theoretically quite easily upgrade to a 13th generation processor. However, if you had an older motherboard, you wouldn't be able to use those two new processors because they require this different socket type. So, for example, the previous generation before that was LGA 1200 which used Intel's Comet Lake, which is 10th gen, and Rocket Lake, which is 11th gen processors. So they had a different setup, which means that you wouldn't be able to move from 10th gen to 12th gen. So there's basically two steps. I'm going to leave this information in the description because it's important to keep in mind the socket type. And if you don't know, there are ways to find out what your socket type is. If you don't know what your motherboard type is, don't worry because there are ways to do it. So the first thing to do is basically to essentially find out that information if you don't know it already. And there is a tool that you can download called CPU-Z. Now CPU-Z, if you download and run that, it will give you information on your system, including info on what motherboard you're currently running. This is important because it will also let you know your BIOS version. And BIOS version might be something that you have to update, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, if you download and run CPU-Z, you'll find out what your motherboard version is. And then you can Google your motherboard and find out what socket type it is. And then once you know that, you'll see what's possible in terms of what you can upgrade to. Now, it's worth noting that you can make quite significant upgrades. So if you're running, for example, a Core i3 processor on an older generation, so let's say we're running on Intel's LGA 1200 and you're running a 10th gen Core i3 processor there, you could theoretically move to an 11th gen processor and maybe go for a Core i5, a Core i7 or a Core i9 processor. Core i9s are the highest end that you could possibly get of that generation, so it is possible to make a significant upgrade, both a new generation and a faster, more powerful processor while still running the same motherboard. So it is possible to do that. But first you need to check your motherboard, you need to work out the socket type, and then you need to see whether it will work with it. And that's the next important part of this, is checking to see that it'll actually work with your motherboard. Now before I get any further, if you found this confusing, one of the things that you can do is to go to PC Part Picker. I'll leave a link in the description to this. If you head over to PC Part Picker, you can put your motherboard in. So find out what your motherboard is, search for your motherboard on PC Part Picker, That'll find that motherboard there, add that as part of the setup process. And then what that will allow you to do is to essentially find CPUs that will fit with it because you can basically assign that and then PC Part Picker will only let you choose things that are compatible. So you can then find which processors are available and which will work with your motherboard. So this is a really helpful thing to do. If you've worked out what your motherboard is, the other important thing to do is to actually check that it'll work with the CPUs that you're trying to do. So if you head over to the motherboard website, so your manufacturer's website, and you check on the specifications in there, you might find a CPU compatibility list. 
which is essentially a list of all the different CPUs that will work with your motherboard. Hopefully it will show you the two generations that are relevant because in most cases, most Intel motherboards are basically change. Every couple of generations, you get a new motherboard refresh. It's not always the case. Historically, there were older generations which would run multiple CPUs. But now, the most recent ones only offer two different CPUs before we skip into a new generation and a new socket type, which then means you have to upgrade. So... Once you've seen whether your CPU is on the compatibility list, you may find that you require a BIOS update. A BIOS update is a simple bit of firmware for your motherboard, which essentially gives it a new technology that allows it to work with the newer generations of CPUs. BIOS updates can be tricky and quite intimidating. You may see a lot of warnings online about problems that can be caused by BIOS updates if something goes wrong during the update. And that can lead to bricking the motherboard and causing big problems. But BIOS updates are also usually essential before replacing your CPU. You may find that it doesn't work if you move to a new CPU before you've installed your BIOS, for example. So you can't just swap out the CPU and hope for the best. So sometimes it's an essential requirement of doing it. So I'm going to show you some of the steps for doing this. Now, this varies from motherboard to motherboard, so it's worth keeping in mind. Check the motherboard's website. You'll find support documents on how to do this, and it might vary a little bit. But what I'm going to show you is the steps for doing it, in this case, with an NZXT N5 Z690 motherboard. Now, in order to do this, you have to head over to the NZXT website and download the latest BIOS update. Basically, we're putting this on a USB drive. The steps for this are essentially formatting a thumb drive to a FAT32 format, and then what we're going to do is you're going to unzip the BIOS file and put it on the drive. Now, in the instructions, NZXT notes to change the file name to creator.rom. But actually, what I found is the best way to do it is to not do that. Just keep it as it is. And you'll see that basically what we have is a step here where we have, we're have we changing from a fourth version of a motherboard BIOS to a ninth version. So it's quite a significant leap. But you basically put that file on the drive and then you plug it into the back of the motherboard where there's a BIOS flashback button and the port. And then you head over to your BIOS. So when you turn your PC on, you press that delete key until the BIOS loads. And then you go in there and then you follow the steps. This will vary from motherboard to motherboard. But in this instance, we go into the advanced settings on the BIOS and then we go to tool and then instant flash. That will automatically find the BIOS that we've put onto the thumb drive. And then from there, you can click to update. That will update and you need to sit there and wait quite some time before it finishes. Be sure not to turn off your PC while this is happening. Now, this varies from motherboard to motherboard. And on this motherboard, you can actually plug the USB stick in and then press and hold the BIOS flashback button on the back of it and it will automatically do it for you. But the end result is hopefully we'll end up with the latest version of the motherboard BIOS. Once all that's done, the next step is to turn off your PC, unplug it, that's very important, and then we're going to go about the process of installing the new CPU. So I'm assuming now you've bought yourself a new CPU and you're going to be swapping. For demonstration purposes, I'm going from an Intel 12th generation Core i7 12700K to a 13th generation i5-13600K. Now it's worth noting that that is actually a downgrade. It's gone up in generation, but down in, in power. But this is just for demonstration purposes. You might be doing it the other way, moving from an i5 to an i9, for example. So once again, make sure that your PC is disconnected from the main. So unplug it, turn it off and disconnect everything. And then what we're going to do is we need to remove the cooler first, obviously. In this case, you can see I'm using a CPU fan cooler, but it'll work the same logic with an all-in-one cooler setup as well. Important points are obviously disconnect this cooler from the motherboard. So you have to pull that cable out that connects it up to the CPU fan cooler and then unscrew it and carefully remove it. Now, obviously, we are going to reuse this cooler or use a new one if you want to. But if for ease of use, you can reuse it if you're using the same socket. But you will need some additional thermal paste. So what you need to do is to take that cooler off and then you need to obviously clean the thermal paste off of it. And I'd recommend using uh, these uh, Noctua wipes. They're essentially special wipes that you can use to clean the bottom of your CPU cooler. We need to clean that off. You also need some extra thermal paste that we can apply to the new CPU. And you've got to go through the steps of removing the old CPU, taking that away and storing it or selling it, whatever you're planning on doing with it. 
and then installing the new one. So basically make sure you remove everything you need to, lift the little latch to open the little protector over the top of the CPU and then basically pull the CPU out get the new CPU and slot it in. Now to install it, you need to make sure that the little gold arrow is pointing to the bottom left corner. Gently seat the CPU down and be very careful during this process that you don't bend any of the pins on the motherboard. It's really important to be very gentle here. And then you're basically replacing the latch, seating that back down and reseating it. Then once that's done, you then need to reapply some thermal paste. So we need fresh thermal paste applied to the surface. People will argue about how much thermal paste you should use. You can use just a single pea-sized amount in the middle, which will then squidge out to the edges. I personally like to apply a very thin layer across the entirety of the CPU because that is essentially giving you a really good contact between the CPU itself and the cooler to ensure that there's a good contact between them and good thermal conductivity so that it cools really nicely. Once that's done, you then need to obviously reseat your cooler. So put that back on top, make sure you screw it back in nice and tight, get the connection between it really good, tighten it up as much as possible without over tightening it, doing this gently, and then plug the CPU fan connection back in or all in one cooler fan connection back in, whichever you're using. Basically we're redoing what we undid in order to get it in this state once it's got all that lovely thermal paste reapplied to it. So now you've got a brand new CPU installed and you're ready to go. So now all you need to do is plug it back in and turn it back on and then it should boot back into Windows without any problems. You wouldn't need a fresh install of Windows as long as you've followed all the steps that I suggested earlier on, making sure the BIOS is updated, checking that it's compatible and other things. You should, in theory, be straight back into Windows without any issues. So hopefully this has been a good guide to talk you through all the things you need to know. If you found it useful, consider subscribing or maybe even clicking that join button to become a member. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.